Hello, everybody. I am Vaios Vitos, and this is the first official episode of the new podcast, Stories by Light, where we're going to talk about uh, landscape, wildlife, and nature photography, and about Greece and its beauties. In this first episode, I couldn't have anyone else but my friend, Christophoros Anagnostopoulos. He's uh, uh, connected from Patra. Patra is a, a, a town in the west of Greece, while I'm I'm speaking from Thessaloniki in the north, so technology binds photographers together. Hello, Christophoros. Hello, Vaios. Thank you for being here. Uh, Christophoros is a landscape uh, astrophotographer, professional photographer. He's a Tokina Global Ambassador, and uh, he's a very good friend. We have done a lot of trips together, a lot of uh, adventures. A lot of photo shootings and many more to come in the future. But that will be the story of another episode, I suppose. In this episode, we will talk about Greece, mostly, about uh, what is Greece and uh, why photographers from all over the world are coming to our country. Greece uh, is not only summer. Eh, Christophoros? Uh, yeah, and this is a very common mistake that people that are not aware about Greece or haven't been here before, uh, they only see the photos... Uh, in the social media and the glo global news uh, websites uh, about uh, Greece and, uh, and the summer and the famous uh, beaches and islands. Uh, but you know something? Uh, Greece is uh, a lot more than that. And actually uh, Greece has some amazing and very beautiful mountains uh, that you can uh, visit and you can take some amazing uh, photographs. It's very, it's very strange for us that we live in Greece, that everybody knows Greece about the islands and about the summertime. Uh, the tourist uh, sector of uh, Greece is very strong and uh, it, it's based on the summertime, yeah. uh, spring to autumn, I would say, because now the climate has changed and we have warm days even in September, even in October. But it could easily, sorry for interrupting you, but it could easily uh, extend the touristic season to the winter as well, because we have some amazing uh, locations that you can visit in winter, uh, especially the mountains of Epirus, uh, the region of Epirus. So I suppose that this uh, should be an ideal uh, change in the future for the touristic operators, at least. And uh, we are talking for tourism in general, but if we go to photography, and videography and uh, cinematography, whatever you want to call it. If we go there, Greece is a, a very, very good uh, place to shoot a lot of things. Of course, we don't have uh, the white animals that they have in Africa. And we don't have uh, the mountains or the landscapes that you can find in Iceland. But we have a very good advantage uh, compared to other countries. Uh, because we are a very small country relative to others, the distances between locations are very short. So uh, you can shoot a, a seascape near the seaside, let's say, uh, and in one hour drive you can go to the mountains and have uh, another, a, a, a very different uh, scenery uh, that you can shoot with. For example, uh, we have a town that's called Volos in the central, uh, in the central part of the country. Uh, and that town has a unique uh, location. Unique location, place. yes, yeah. of course. Uh, thank you, Chris. Uh, because it has sea and it has also the mountain pilio that you can uh, find images to shoot. Greece, in general, is a, a very safe country. We don't have here animals that can eat you. And the people are very warm. You can find very nice food, very good food to eat. And I'm telling all of this because uh, photography is not only getting outside and getting the shot, it's the whole experience of living somewhere, living on the on the cities, on the villages, or even outside uh, with uh, your tent. You can be camping very safe. There you, you won't have a problem. And uh, let's talk now. Uh, we will talk about some specific places in Greece that we like and we visit a lot as landscape photographers. And first of all, I will talk about Jumerka. And I will talk about Jumerka because Chris is from the area. He knows a lot of about the area. And uh, he, he was very kind to take me with him two times in that very, very beautiful region to see the mountains and to shoot some images. Yeah, Jumerka region is a part, uh, actually, is the, uh, the biggest and the longest uh, uh, mountain peak we have uh, in Greece. 
uh, it's like the spine of Greece, it's located in the center, uh, part of the mainland uh, and it's a place with some amazing sceneries that can uh, change drastically from high mountains with snow uh, during the winter time and uh, below uh, the, the mountain slopes you can find uh, big rivers with crystal clear water so uh, you can change uh, the photographic uh, genres from long exposure to uh, fast shooting to, to anything. Uh, it's the place that um, I tried to, uh, to, to showcase uh, through my latest film Into the Mountains. It's like an ode to, to the region of Epirus because it's not so popular and not so famous uh, as we said before. Uh, and it's the place that we, we uh, together with Vios, will conduct some of uh, our new uh, workshops uh, this year and uh, the coming years from now. And uh, the, the part that I like uh, with Jumerka is that uh, it's uh, unknown. Not many people know the area. Not many photographers go there to shoot. Of course, we have some places that even very... Uh, even. Uh, Foreign photographers are coming to shoot landscape. I will mention Meteora here. Meteora is a very uh, unique place uh, in, uh, I would say, central to north part of Greece, which uh, you may know it if you are very old because a uh, James Bond movie was uh, uh, take, took place there. Meteora is has a very uh, nice formations of rocks and mountains and uh, also has a very many monasteries uh, with monks uh, christians so uh, many photographers go there and go for example to vicos canyon which is very known also but jumerka is not so known and it's uh, it's an opportunity to shoot images that nobody will have yeah, and uh, just to take a note here, uh, because uh, some uh, the people that are going to hear this podcast uh, will hear the, the word Jumerka, which is like uh, the word that we uh, here in Greece uh, call the, these mountains, but uh, there is a, an official name that is called the Pindus region, so it's like um, the mountains of Pindus, but we call it Jumerka, so from now on you get the idea of uh, what we are talking about. But of course, if you uh, if you if you write Jumerka, I think you will get it. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm in, sure. uh, in Google, and uh, one other place that is not very known and it's very nice, it's very photogenic, I would say, is uh, the the mountains of Gramos. Gramos is a very very beautiful area with big mountains, and uh, you can shoot a lot of landscape and even woodland uh, photography. We have also alpine lakes. In Gramos, there is the lake of Gistova, where you can uh, go and uh, take a hike. Not very, it's not very long, about one hour, one hour and a half, and you can camp and you can shoot uh, astrophotography or, or uh, anything else you like. In the nearby mountain of Timphi, which, which is very close to the mountain of Gramos, we can find the alpine lake, the dragon lake, as it's called here, uh, of, of Timphi. Uh, it's located in uh, 2200 meters. Uh, it's very high. Uh, although it's not accessible during the, the winter, so you can get there after May and maybe uh, around October, uh, if the weather is good, of course. Uh, otherwise, because of the snow, you can go, not uh, go there. And also we have Mutsalia Lake in Gramos, which is a very easy lake to go because uh, you can go by car and uh, uh, ride in front of the lake. Okay, we, of course, when we talk about lakes in Greece, don't uh, don't uh, don't imagine lakes like you have in uh, Canada or some other countries that are vast lakes. This is very very small lakes. Okay, one of the biggest lake uh, I will mention in Greece is Kerkini, which is a wildlife destination for every photographer every year during the winter to shoot the Dalmatian pelicans, which is a very very easy shoot for wildlife photographers and it produces very extremely beautiful and striking images but uh, but we don't have uh, mountains only on the northern part because all these mountains that we mentioned so far are located in the northern part of greece uh, near uh, macedonia let's say so just to try to visualize in the map where exactly we are 
we have uh, some amazing mountains and some amazing shooting locations in the, in the south as well, like in the Peloponnese region. Uh, we have the mountain of Helmos, which is located very close to the, uh, the old city and the famous city of Calabria. So, uh, regarding Helmos mountain, uh, it's a very uh, high mountain. It's, it's peak Nereidorachi, as we call it in Greek. It's located in 2400 meters and uh, actually there, there is a very big um, telescope that is located. It's called the Aristarchos Telescope and it's, uh, it was uh, supported uh, by the European Space uh, Agency and the reason is that uh, uh, at that location, although the weather conditions uh, are sometimes difficult, it's one of the darkest locations, uh, not only in Greece, but in the whole uh, Europe. Uh, so the, the stars that you will see there with your naked eyes uh, will amaze you. So you will think that your eyes possibly have something because you will not understand how many stars you, uh, you can see with your naked eyes and even the Milky Way, of course. So it's an ideal location for astrophotography. Uh, but as I said, you have to be very careful regarding the weather uh, because the weather conditions can change drastically there. Uh, so yeah, just take a note. But the good thing is that you can approach the location by car uh, all the way. So no hiking, no nothing. Just be a little careful. And uh, let me tell uh, quickly here that uh, Nera Idorachi, as Christopher said, is, is uh, the back of, of the ferry uh, in English. Let's translate that in English. Ah, yeah, yeah. And uh, Greece is, uh, has a lot of places, a lot of places that you have a very small light pollution. So it's very, very good for astrophotography. And uh, Christopher has produced some uh, excellent images here in our country. So even if you are an astrophotographer, Greece, is a place that you should visit. Except the only thing that we are missing is that we cannot see uh, the Aurora Borealis. But then again, we have other things to see. Yes. <laughs> Leave something to, have, to other yeah, countries. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we must have an excuse to travel also. Okay. Yeah, sure. So Greece has a lot of places to shoot either uh, astrophotography, landscape, wildlife. And uh, me and Christophoros, we are trying to get people from other countries to our uh, country and see the beauties, shoot and have good uh, times. Because I said before, it's not only about photography, it's about being out there, shooting, it, uh, having a good time, learning about our craft, about photography or videography. And uh, we have some workshops that you can attend either in the winter or in uh, the spring autumn. In the summer, uh, at least I have uh, for the summer, uh, for the Milky Way season. So you are welcome to check out our websites, uh, uh, viosvitos.com uh, and uh, christophanagno.com. Okay, and uh, anyone that wants to learn about our workshops can go inside and see uh, everything. And of course, you can contact us and learn more details about uh, that. One small note that uh, the workshops that you can see now uh, are not uh, um, only that. We have many more that we are designing them now because we want to provide to the participants the best possible experience uh, both in out of, uh, in the field when shooting, as also the whole experience of traveling and living uh, the way the mountain experience in Greece. So uh, feel free to check them uh, uh, often because many more will be announced very soon in both my website and the Vios website. So yeah, and follow us on social media, of course, because we'll make some uh, announcements there as well. And I think this is uh, this episode of our podcast uh, talking about Greece and what you can do in Greece. So uh, especially in the photography side of uh, the story. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to contact us and uh, ask us whatever we want. I want to, to thank uh, Christopher for being here with me and uh, having you. this uh, conversation. We hope that everybody is okay. And uh, of course, the best way to get better in photography and videography is to be out there and shooting, so get out there.